Significant figures are super important when you're taking scientific measurements. We haven't really talked about them too much, although we have mentioned that when you put a number into a calculator to do a calculation, you can't just take all the decimals. You have to do some rounding to figure out what numbers are best to have. Instruments differ in the number of significant figures that can be obtained from them. For example, if we have this meter stick here, we want to measure how long this plank is, we only have that that is one full meter. We don't know anything else about it. We can estimate and we can say, all right, well, right about here is the halfway mark. So yeah, maybe more like that. So maybe this is 0.5. So this is between 0.5 and 1. I don't know how much it is. We'll have to go from there. But it's only an estimate. However, as soon as we break our one meter stick up into tenths, we can see that 0.5 wasn't a bad estimate, but really 0.6 or 60 centimeters was an even, even a better estimate. But again, if we look here, it's not exactly 60, it's a little bit more than 60. So we know that the number of significant figures that we can talk about is more in example B than in example A because we have some more individual and in between measurements. Now if we break it down even more and we see between 60 and 70 there's tenths marks so we have 61 here we know that our plank is really between 60 and 61 looks to be closer to 61 than 60 so we could potentially estimate this to be say 60.8 centimeters. All of these digits are significant even though this last one is estimated. When you're talking about estimation and significant figures, you can only have one estimated digit in your number. So, as we see, measurements must always be reported to the correct number of significant figures because it tells us a lot about the accuracy of the measurement. There are tons of rules that go with significant figures. You're going to want to make sure that you listen to this a couple of times as well as take notes on it so that you know exactly how um, to figure out your significant figures and which digits are significant or not. First off, every non-digit zero in a reported measurement is assumed to be significant. So in this one, there's three non-digit zeros non-zero digits rather, so it has three significant figures. In this one there's only two, so it only has two significant figures. The zeros between non-zeros are significant also. So here we have four, here we have nine, which is a pretty large amount of significant figures for a measurement. And then finally down here we have four. It doesn't matter that this is a really small number, or here that this is a really big number, because they're written in scientific notation, it's only the number of digits in the coefficient that's important. But the left zeros, the left zeros here, all of these are not significant. None of those is significant, none of those is significant. So that 0 0.0071 only has two sig figs, 0 0.0000050023 has five sig figs because from the five to the three is significant but nothing else is. Zeros at the other end, if they are to the right of the decimal point, then they are significant. So while leading zeros are not significant, this zero here is significant because here's our decimal point. So let's take a look here for a minute. How many sig figs does this one have? Think about it for a moment. Think about the rules that we've talked about so far. We know that these three are definitely significant because it's two non-zero digits with a zero in between. But what about these two? Because the zeros, the far zero is at the right of the decimal, then it is also counts as a significant figure. So this one has five sig figs. This one 
has one, two, three, four, five, six sig figs. Because again, these two zeros, even though they're ending zeros, they are to the right of the decimal. So they are, in fact, significant. All right, here's some more rules. Zeros at the rightmost end of the measurement. So the right end of the measurement, but to the left of an understood decimal point, which means it doesn't have to be written. So for example, this number, 2,700 meters, has three sig figs. Only these three. It's sort of like in our very first measurement when we had that meter stick where it only went out to one meter. The closest we could say that that was to um, any significant figures would be 0.6 at the most. But these zeros are not significant because we don't know if our measurement is really close to 20,800 or 20,600 and 20,000 if the 7 is rounded or not. Similarly, none of these four zeros here are significant. It's only these first four digits that are significant. There are, however, two situations that have an unlimited number of significant figures. One is counting. If you're counting, then you, they're all significant. The other is an exact quantity that we've measured. For example, we have determined that there are 60 minutes in an hour. Those minute, all 60 minutes are significant. So let's see how this relates to measurement. Let's take a look at this object. We have a piece of green marble here, and we want to measure it in centimeters. So what can we say about it in terms of its length? We know, at the very least, it's between 2 and 3 centimeters long. Getting a little bit more specific, though, we know that it is between 2.8 and 2.9 centimeters long. So right now we have two significant figures, either 2.8 or the 2.9. But I know that it's not exactly a 2.9. I know that it's past 2.8. So now what am I going to do about this space here? What am I going to do to figure out how much that part right there is beyond the 0.8? Interestingly enough, what the human is very good at doing, the human eye is very good at doing, is dividing things into 10 equal parts. So if we look at this space between the 8 and the 9, and we mentally divide it into 10 equal parts, we can say that the edge of this is beyond the 5, probably not to the 7, and we can estimate it to be at the 6 tenths spot of the 10 that you marked. So this gives us a length of our piece of marble of 2.86 centimeters. The first two digits are certain. We know for sure that it's 2.8 because 2.8 is to this line and we know for sure it's past that. The last one is estimated, but just because it, es it is estimated doesn't mean that it's not significant. In fact, in this particular case, all three of these digits are significant. Because the last one is an estimation, it still counts because it tells us how close it is to the 8 or to the next one up, which is a 9. It confirms that the 8 is an accurate certain measurement, in other words. The issue of estimation is important. It tells us uh, we know that human mind is capable of dividing short distances into tenths. However, there is error built into this because it is an estimate. So, as I said before, only one estimated digit is significant. So make sure that when you're writing your measurements down that it's only the last digit that is estimated. And, of course, always remember your units. All right, let's take a look at this thermometer. It's in Celsius. What would you say the measurement is on this thermometer? We know that from 10 to 20 is broken up into 10 marks. So this line here is 15. There are no marks, however, between the fourth and the fifth line. So we cannot tell 
whether that line is exactly at the 15, if it's below the 15, if it's above the 15. It looks pretty darn close to the 15 to me. But because we can't get any closer to do any better estimates, we have to have our last digit, our estimated last digit, be in the tenths place. So again, we take a gap between the whole numbers. There's no breaking it down. We can break it down mentally, and we estimate that it is not below the 15, not above the 15. So in this particular case, we would report the temperature measurement to be 15.0 centimeters. So the last digit is our estimated digit. Still significant, but estimated. When we're taking measurements from graduated cylinders, we always want to remember to measure from the bottom of the meniscus. On this picture on the left, each line is worth 0.5 as opposed to 0.1 or 1. But again, we can look at this meniscus measurement here. It looks like it's at 30. It doesn't look above or below 30. So we could say that this is 30.0. And since it's a liquid measurement, I will make the assumption at this point that it's milliliters. Over here, from 4 to 5, we have the tenths marked out. The line is between the 0.2 and the 0.3. So your measurement is probably 4.28 or 9. And again, milliliters or just units. Again, estimation one digit beyond the smallest division. This is really the key right here to what you can estimate. Your graduated cylinder only marks to the ones place, so your value of your number can only go to one digit smaller than that. And here, pretty good guess for us, 4.28. You could have said 4.29 and that would have been okay as well, just because of how close those lines are together. It allows us to estimate to the hundredths place because each one of these lines is already to the tenths place. Again, when we are doing significant figures, there's a lot of rules to remember, not just on numbers, but on measurements as well. The key for measuring is you want to go to one place beyond what your measurement tool is measured to. So if your meter stick reads to millimeters, then you should be able to estimate one past the millimeter reading and go to there for your measurement. And then those digits would be significant. If it's a number that you've been given, you have to make sure of what you know the significant figures are. Why? Because then when you're doing mathematics with it and you're reporting a, an overall observation or a slope of a line or something like that, you will only report your significant figures, not all of the digits that you come up with from having done a mathematics calculation on your data. So again, review this PowerPoint whenever you need to, or this video rather, whenever you need to, to refresh your memory about significant figures. And good luck on the worksheet.